Live from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Oracle Open World 2015. Brought to you by Oracle. Now your host, John Furrier. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in San Francisco on Howard Street for Oracle Open World's special presentation of theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier, founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my next two guests, Prakash Ramamurthy, Senior Vice President of Systems and Cloud Management, uh, basically Management Cloud at Oracle, and Mary Johnson, Turner Research, Vice President at uh, Enterprise Systems Management at IDC. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thank so you. I had to kick my glasses off to read, read the intro there, but I want to just get your take on it because uh, we just had Amit on, Lavery, talking about the cloud. And one question I didn't get to ask him was the success. Mark Hurry was talking about the pipeline of customers already in motion on the cloud. So uh, the question I wanted to ask him, which is great timing for you guys is, how do they integrate it, which he talked about, but then how do they manage it? This is a big issue, and he, you know, ease of use is something that he was generally throwing around there. So what is the status of the management cloud? Because that will be a differentiator, like security end-to-end -end is a differentiator. Management certainly will be, to me, not just table stakes, truly differentiated. Absolutely, I think um, we're, we're here because we're launching it uh, today, actually, uh, the management cloud, and um, the interesting thing is this, which is, Today, if you look at it, um, whether it's on our cloud or uh, on on premise, the rate of innovation is very, very robust, right? I mean, you have a, a mobile phone, you're seeing your apps getting refreshed twice a week or, or, uh, or even faster than that. So what it means is you need the next generation monitoring solution that can monitor all of that. So our goal with Oracle Management Cloud is to help you manage and monitor your solutions independent of where they're deployed. If you deploy it on Oracle Cloud, it'll, be, it'll come baked with it to be able to monitor it uh, right from the get-go. Or if you still have it on-premise, we will allow you to uh, monitor it and break down those data silos so it's very effective. So like you said, it's very, very critical that people uh, look at what their challenges are today in terms of proactive monitoring and troubleshooting uh, to get to the next generation solutions we are providing. Mary, I want to ask you a question on the trends, but before that I want to just say that one of the things I love about doing the Oracle shows, our sixth year at theCUBE here, is that for an old timer like me, who's seen the client server, live the client server revolution, which is now kind of almost a point in time now, it's almost, it's over, now we're into the cloud, cloud modern era. It's interesting to see because the same, same things keep coming up again. It's like the platforms, the tooling. So I got to ask you the question on what is the key trends that are driving this new application space? Because if you look at the client server, one of the big things that really was huge was the application market. I mean, now with granted, it was siloed up by, you know, by vendors, but now with open source, there's a huge application boom right now. That's going to impact IT operations. Sure, I mean, I think that um, if you look at it, there's been, like you said, a couple of generations of technology. We had mainframes, things changed really slow, right? <laughs> then we had client server, which was to give business units and developers more control, and things started to speed up and change a little more quickly. But now in our current cloud-native, cloud-based development, real-time, microservice, open-source-based kind of world, the rate and pace of change is almost constant. You're seeing so many organizations that are moving to continuous delivery modes, much of it hosted on public cloud or, or hybrid private public cloud, and they're changing features and functions every day. And that creates huge management challenges in terms of just trying to understand uh, is the end-to-end -end application performing effectively? Are the end users getting what they need? Are the business uh, decision makers really understanding the impact of those outages uh, or upgrades? And uh, it, it, so it's very complex, and then I think it's raising the set of requirements for uh, particularly application performance monitoring and IT operations and log analytics. How is Oracle addressing these trends? Because one of the things that People liked in IT like to put things into two camps, rip and replace, okay, or evolutionary development. And we're clearly on the cloud evolutionary because Oracle has, it's not going to be, it's not going to go away, right? So you can say Oracle native is the cloud strategy for all the Oracle customers. But yet now with open source, there's net new applications. Hadoop, um, you got Java, obviously 20 years anniversary. 
So there's new stuff going on. IoT is a huge application market right now. Now I can run an IoT thing in the cloud somewhere else or maybe on Amazon or somewhere else, but at the end of the day, I got to run it through my operational systems, my systems of engagement, systems of record, which is Oracle, right? So is it an Oracle native cloud? Is it a cloud native? I mean, it, how do you see Oracle addressing that dynamic? Are they well positioned? Well, I think uh, Oracle has a pretty broad portfolio. You know, they've had, again, from a management perspective, they've had Oracle Enterprise Manager on prem for many, many years. I think that the, uh, the new offerings that are being announced today really are interesting in that they extend Oracle's uh, monitoring and analytics to a whole range of cloud-based solutions, uh, many of which may not necessarily have been born on the Oracle platforms. So I think it's a good recognition of the need for heterogeneity and the need to recognize that it is going to be a very hybrid world for many, many years. So I think that those are all real uh, you know, positive factors in, in the new releases yeah, here. And Amit was talking about the integrated pass, platform as a service challenge to connect those environments. But on the management side, what are you guys delivering? Because that's going to be the challenge. Prakash, talk about the specific things that you guys are announcing and delivering to customers today. So specifically, we are delivering three services. Um, uh, first one is around application performance monitoring that allows our customers to stay ahead of their customers and their problems and give them the best user experience uh, and monitor that and troubleshoot that. And then a second service is around managing your logs and extracting uh, IT operational data and business data out of it. Today, if you look at it, the most common thing people do with the logs is to archive them and put it away because they don't want that to interrupt their production systems, but that has a ton of good information. So we have the second service- Data exhaust becomes exa gold. Exactly, so t today what happens is they just get put away, uh, they get archived, uh, and uh, that has real nuggets of business information and IT information. Being able to collect all of that and use it for your rapid troubleshooting as well. So that's the second service. The third one is uh, around IT analytics. I call those first two services kind of like the Fitbit for your applications. Yeah. You're constantly getting vitals out of it. Uh, and why throw that away if you don't have an issue? Still use it to run some interesting capacity trends and forecasting and all of that. So use your real data to forecast uh, your IT health as opposed to using a spreadsheet with some um, random data that you collected in a point in time. So. That's what we are announcing, three services, application performance monitoring, log analytics, and long-term trending and forecasting with IT analytics. Well, IT Splunk's been doing some log files, that's how they were born, people Splunk their data. Exactly. And they're trying to kind of get into that. How do you guys compare to things like Splunk and other tools? I know Tableau is a, a new relationship that was announced with the data visualization. Yeah. Larry kind of talked about that yesterday. Talk about that how people are using that data exhaust. Give me some examples. So the most fundamental difference in what we are doing is this, which is we do not differentiate the sources of data and the classes of data when we bring it to the cloud. So it could be metric data that you can collect based on your monitoring your health of your applications, which Splunk doesn't do, for example, and then log data, uh, but collect all of that and correlate it together so that in essence what we want to do is this, which is, the enterprises today don't have a really a data problem. They have an insight problem, which is they want to be able to just see the right amount of data when they have a problem, not all the data when they have a problem. Well, it depends how you look at the data problem. They don't have a data problem if you define that as they got all this data, <laughs> so they have plenty of data. That's true. There's no problem, right? Yeah. There's know? no dearth you know, of data yeah, problems. Yeah, yeah. So, but that's that, what I meant. That, no, I know, but I was just kind of making this fun. It was a good comment because I like that because that's, that is really not an issue. The data is coming. Yeah. And that's, you know, granted, a whole other problem. But you guys have scale now with that. But the analytics is a big thing. I want to talk about that because it can be problematic. I may talk to some customers all the time and they say, if someone comes in here and sells me another dashboard, I'm going to shoot myself. Exactly. So it's like, because, and I said, what do you mean by that? He goes, well, there's so many alarms going off, I don't know what to pay attention to. That's where we're starting to see machine learning, some of these tools. Can you share any color on what you Great guys are doing point. in that area? Great point. It's exactly uh, right, which is one of the underpinnings for us is to be able to automatically generate baseline and detect anomalies. The last thing, I mean, our products support our own public cloud, and I hear from the guys who run that cloud saying, don't just give me another alert. Tell me what I need to do with an alert, because I need to be able to disposition the alert. So what we want to do is to understand the normal behavior of your application and only alert you when there's an anomaly. 
Okay, that's so right, that's yeah. part of our machine learning. Kind of prioritization, learning, some learning uh, algorithms involved, understand some pattern recognition. That's right, that and nature. only tell you what the outlier is, and when and, and us determine what the outlier is, as opposed to you setting thresholds for us to know it, because sometimes things change. If you are an e-commerce application, or uh, the day before Thanksgiving would have a different pattern than the third week of January, right? I mean, just that, the way the world works. So I want to, I want to talk to you about uh, some, Larry made a comment yesterday in the keynote. I always like to take a dig at Workday, um, but you know, in a way, he likes Workday because you know it's competition and also um, it highlights some of the features that Oracle has. But what what uh, Workday is actually losing some share to ServiceNow, a company here in Silicon Valley that is an ITSM, IT service management company, and they have been very successful with their developer program, which actually is starting to nibble away at WorkShare's market share, because they're building, these developers are building these really focused HR apps mm -hmm. that is not platforms, it's a tool. And it, like an expense report, for example, and it works really, really well. But Workday has a plethora of features and they don't always have the best in class features. Uh -huh. So that brings up the whole developer uh, angle. What do you, you guys have a story there for developers, APIs, how do you talk to the developers? Absolutely. Can you share? Yeah, absolutely. We have a REST API that the developers can use to um, collect the data from there into their own dashboards if they want to. And also, for example, you can automatically deploy our agents when you're using our Java cloud service so that monitoring gets baked into it. Um, so we have APIs for both inputting data into our cloud and extracting data back from the cloud. We'll have APIs for you to uh, take the events that we generate into your own uh, event uh, dashboard that you have. So I'm so. a developer, I have a team, I can, I can do some stuff, build my own kind of visualization, UI, and just have JSON endpoints come right into the Absolutely. application. Absolutely, absolutely. Mary, I know she smirked when I said ServiceNow. Do you want to share some insight into this dynamic? Because this is kind of what's happening on the cloud. These tools are popping up. You yeah, I think, on that? I think they, well, yeah, and again, I think what we're talking about today is to be able to monitor and analyze and optimize a lot of those different tools and deliver them via cloud platform. And I think that we are finding that DevOps organizations are very interested in cloud-based solutions that help them do this better, cheaper, faster. Um, so I think that, uh, you know, I think it's an opportunity. ServiceNow has clearly been a, a pioneer in the yeah. delivery of, of system management as a cloud-based model. And I think uh, it's interesting that uh, Oracle is actually choosing to enter that market in a, in a different place. Yeah. I mean, they're actually well, not. Position of strength, and you got the systems of record. Right, and they own the right. data. And, like, and really focusing on, and really, you know, yeah. to Prakash's point, really focusing on data because uh, managing, effectively managing the performance and operation of applications and complex environments, it's all it is a huge data problem, and you've got data coming from so many sources, so many formats. Yeah. And being able to take that in rapidly, uh, to transform it, normalize it, and make it digestible for humans yes. is something that uh, is really important in these complex environments. And um, you know, so I think it's going to be interesting to see. I think it's a great. I agree with you. I think it's a great strategy. By focusing on the data, you have a lot of range. And I wrote a blog post in 2007. Now I'm going way back. Data is the new developer kit, and now that's actually happening. You look at data, people are playing with the data like a developer plays with function calls, if you will. So what you're seeing now is a data-rich environment, hence the not, not a problem of having enough data laying around. The problem is how do you use the data to get insight actionable insights. Insight is a problem, yeah. Insight is a huge problem, yeah. and that's only going to be accelerated by faster performance machines in an easy-to-use environment. Like and better analytics, because yeah. you, you want if the user knows what the problem is that they're looking for, there are a lot of tools that will help you find it. Yeah. But if you do not know what the problem is, and to guide them to where the problem is, is where, uh, where there's real uh, opportunity. Yeah. And there's a real pain point in these enterprises. Especially now that you and I don't tolerate uh, downtimes, right? You never cut anybody's slack saying, oh, the website is slow, but they've been innovating, I'm going to give them some slack. Nobody does that. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and because now everything's measurable. Yeah. Now, for the first time in the history of business, everything's measurable. That's right. And that's like, just mind-blowing to me. I mean, but I think it's a huge app. I want to get your thoughts on the application market because I just see a massive tsunami coming of third-party developers, and I'm not sure Oracle can handle that. I didn't, that's my personal opinion. Counter that. I mean, I, people want to know, can Oracle handle an ecosystem of third-party developers? Absolutely. Um, we have shown that before with, with Java, um, and I think you see every one of our services having open APIs. We are quoting third-party developers. We, have, we will be continuing to support them, and I think we'll be able to handle it, and we need to do that. 
as a part of this ecosystem. Yeah, I mean, it's a platform. Yeah. So you have to enable. Absolutely. And that's the open message. Exactly. All right, so Prakash, what, what's your advice for the people at Oracle Open World here and the people watching? Let's start with the people here on site. If they catch this video, we're going to be putting up some snippets before you even get off the set here. So one, what sessions should they attend? What, where should I get more information? What sessions and breakouts and then presentations should they go so to? So I have a keynote tomorrow at 11 a.m. Okay. that I would love for them to attend. Um, and outside of that, there are some hands-on labs here that they should go look at the products. And uh, people who are uh, remote, they should go to cloud.oracle.com slash management, where we have all the services listed, and take a look at it. And we are really, really going to be putting out a very differentiated solution than what is available in the marketplace, and I would love for them to check it out and give us feedback. For the folks watching online and customers in general, when they squint through all the activities, a lot of bombs dropping here at Oracle. I mean, a lot of announcements. This is pretty, pretty unprecedented. What should they look for? What are the, if you had to point to someone to one, one point, data point within your world that's going to get their attention and have them dive in deep, what should they look at? If they're having issues with their applications today, if they're hearing about their application issues first from their customers and not by themselves, they should be looking at our solutions to see how they can get ahead of the customers. And that's what, that's one precise message they can take back.